In this tutorial, we're going to cover a little bit of the basics of variables and lists. Variables and lists in the Scratch environment can be found underneath the Data tab. Uh, you may be wondering what a variable is. Well, we'll start with just using variables first. A variable is a value that's stored in computer memory that can change, so it has a dynamicacy to it. So. You know, you can take this value, you can do perform math operations on it, set it equal to another value when you need to, and you can also increment the values, etc. It's great for doing things such as keeping score, number of lives loved, concepts similar to that. So what we're going to do today is we're going to try to make a program that counts the amount of times someone has pressed space, on the computer and then we're also going to make a game make it make it to where we have one version of the program that says the actual integer value one two three and then we're going to have another version that actually prints out the value of the number or, or the the letters of the number such as zero not zero o and e t w o etc so the first thing we're going to have to do is Make sure you have a sprite with on the screen on the screen. I happen to have the crab, and I'm gonna rename this project counting crabs. Now we're gonna navigate over to the events panel or tab, whatever you want to call it. And once here we're gonna pull in the win key pressed. And we're gonna use the space key for this. Now you can switch it to all kinds of keys via this here. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go to our data tab and we're going to make a new variable. Where are we going to name this variable? We're going to name this variable, uh, we're just going to name it counter. And you have two different options here. You have for all sprites or for this sprite only. You want to select for all sprites, I mean for this sprite only, because this variable is only going to apply to the crab that we have here on the stage, not to the other sprites. This is what we refer to as a private variable within normal programming. Um, if it were for all sprites, it'd be called a public variable. But because it's only for this sprite, we're going to declare it uh, private. Or for this sprite only, as it is referred to in Scratch. Now that we have that set up, we're going to go back over to the events panel and we're going to pull in a green hat block. What we're going to do with this block is we're going to set an initial value of counter to zero. If you don't do this, when you uh, when you run the program, at the end of it, you'll have a value, say you press space eight times, so the value of counter therefore would be eight. Now, when you would run the program again, the value would stay at eight if you do not put the when green hat uh, button clicked, set the counter value to zero and that is the reason for doing this. You want to instantiate your value to zero and that prevents problems that would occur in your program later. You of course can't put the set counter zero when the space is pressed because you'd have what's called a logic error where every time the key is pressed it would set the counter equal to zero then increment it. Speaking of incrementing, we are going to change counter by one whenever the key's space is pressed and we're also going to go ahead and pull in a look here and we're going to say that the key has been pressed multiple times. Now if you may notice right now you only have an option of placing counter in here and you want the crab to also say a string with that counter. So in order to do that we need to go over to the operators tab. Operators perform functions on certain values such as adding uh, numbers together um, you can also it's also used in comparative logic that we'll get to later but what we're interested in is the join block right here and what this does is concatenates this two strings together we're just gonna put counter space presses or button presses and once you have that set up you go ahead and drop that within the the uh, say block of the when key press when space key pressed 
uh, hat. Now we're gonna right click here. And we're gonna click clean up, and that'll organize our, our um, code a little bit better. You could also drag this down here if you click clean up. It'll organize it top bottom. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add a comment. Actually, we're gonna delete this comment. You're gonna click on the win key space press. You're gonna add a comment directly to that block. You notice it actually points over. And we're gonna say this block of code increments the value, the counter value when the space key is pressed. And now we probably don't actually need this comment here. It's just I'm trying to show you how to, how to do comments and it is a good practice to have these little comments in here because when you come back you don't have to figure out what a piece of code is doing. You just read the comment and it tells you what it is doing. Um, but anyhow we're going to go ahead and we're going to click the green hat here and let the program run. So as you see the crab counter over here in the top left corner if you cannot see that, you go to data tab and you click this little checkbox here beside the variable name and it will pop up here. Counter value is currently zero. Now we're going to hit space one time and see what happens. There we go. Click the green hat and now when you click, when you press the space button, it increments the crab counter value by an integer value of 1 to display your total button presses. And that is the basic introduction to variables. Uh, there's You can use the operators to change these values if you want it to. In fact, we're going to rewrite the set counter, uh, the change counter just for fun to show you a different way of doing the same exact thing. We're going to pull out the change counter by one and we're going to pull in a set counter value and what we're going to do here is we're going to take and we're just going to add one to the value. So in order to do that we're going to pull in from the data tab the counter variable and put it in here put it into the addition Sometimes scratch can be a little bit difficult. There we go. And once we have it there, we're going to add one to it. And if you go to the green hat and click go, you will realize that this does the exact same thing that the prior code does. It's just written a different way. Um, you can really write it either way, it's up to you. Personally, I'd stick to change by value as it is a little bit easier to read and understand. Now that we have this implemented, we're going to go ahead and we're going to implement the list that I was talking about earlier. So click the little red stop button here. And we are going to make a new list that says number, we're going to call this list number names. And we're once again going to keep this private or for this sprite only. What we want to do with this list, we're not going to get into all the operators that exist here. We'll do some of those later when we make a number guessing game or a question game. But what we want to do is we want to take the list and we want to add in some values here using this button. If you don't see the list over here, make sure the checkbox is checked. And I'm not going to do but like five values here. But we're basically just going to put the number where the va the num the actual spelled out version of the number where the actual where the number index is in the list. That's what the the index is the location of a value in a list. So an index of one goes to one, two goes to two, three goes to three, four goes to four. And for the fifth index, we're of course we're just going to have five. And now we're going to uh, change our say a little bit. We don't want to say the integer value anymore. We want to say the value that exists within the list. 
in order to do this we're just going to simply access the counter value within list the index of counter so as you see that when counter is at one you want one when counter is at two you want two etc so on and so forth so we're just going to drop that down into the little tab here and now if we run our script you will see that the program works just fine displaying out the spelled out versions of the words one button presses two button presses three button presses four button presses five button presses and when you get to six you'll notice that it just says blank button presses what happens is your index goes without, outside the bounds of your array and therefore uh, scratch handles what would actually be a programming error and it gives it a value of a, of a null string value. Anyway, that's all I have for you to deal with list and variables for this tutorial. In the next tutorial, we'll be making a, 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 question, a question type game where you can uh, actually add values to a list and add answers and questions. But we'll get more into that later. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.